Eek Steeks! Welcome to Knitting Daily. I'm your host, Uni Jang. On today's episode, we're exploring steeking, silk yarns, and crochet motifs. I'll begin this episode with a tutorial on unfinished, crochet finished, and machine finished steeks. With this knowledge, you can conquer your fears about steeking when you break it down into easy to understand steps and learn the benefits steeking can bring to your own designs. Then, on today's Accessorize Me segment, we'll explore crochet motifs with designer and crochet expert Kristen Omdahl. She'll demonstrate a portion of her popular birch vest. On today's Yarn Spotlight, we'll talk silk blends. This luxurious material adds shine to blended yarns, and we'll discuss the benefits of blending yarns with silk and what projects these yarn lend themselves to. Finally, I'll wrap up today's episode on steaks with a quick tip for tacking them down. So let's get started. Take a look at the vest I've got over on my left here, um, and it's worked in an all over fair isle pattern. Now we all know that when you're working stranded color work or fair isle, it's a lot easier to work in the round for a couple of different reasons. Because the right side of the work is always facing you, and because all you need to do is knit. You never need to purl and strand at the same time. And that works just fine when the fabric is a closed tube all the way up to here. But once you get to the neckline and to the armholes, you can't, well, you, how are you going to span that to keep working in the round? Well, you do that with a steek. And I'm just gonna turn this vest inside out for you and you can see what I mean. On this vest, you can see that we have kind of this, these extra stitches and I've left it free over on this side so you can really see how that works. We've got these extra stitches and these were once part of the tube itself see right here. These were once part of the tube itself. Then we cut right up the middle, folded those back to make facings, and then picked up our edgings all the way around the edge. So all steaking is, is a way to create a bridge between two pieces of fabric that are later going to be separated. And that bridge allows you to continue working in the round. So let's look at a couple of different ways to finish these steaks. So you might be thinking, what do you mean cut your knitting, cut your work up? Well, you do need to take your scissors to your knitting, but you don't really have to worry because uh, the way that steaking is planned, you're not, you don't need to worry about moving, in, about unraveling your work. The first reason for that is because knitting never really wants to unravel sideways. When knitting unravels, it drops down. We all know when that happens, when you drop a stitch by accident and all of a sudden you've got a series of ladders all the way down your, your, your uh, your piece of knitting there. Well, that happens really easily, but to unravel knitting sideways, you really need to go in there and take a needle and unpick one stitch after another, which obviously you're not going to do. Um, so for that reason, steaking is usually just fine. That Steaking kind of takes advantage of that property of the knitting. Um, but for another, you know, Typically, you secure the steak in some way. The really traditional way to work a steak is completely unfinished with no securing on either side of the knitting. And you just cut and the natural felting quality of the fibers, the, the yarns that are usually used in traditional fair isle work, creates kind of a matted surface that is really hesitant to unravel. You'll notice that in all of these swatches, my steak is seven stitches wide. I've got Four stitches, it starts here, a red stitch, a camel, red, camel, red, camel, red. These four stitches on the, or the, these red stitches on the edges are kind of my border stitches. I'm gonna pick up any neck band or arm, armhole facing or anything like that, right in between that border stitch and the beginning of the pattern. This camel stitch in the middle, that's my center stitch. That's where I'm going to cut. You can have an even number of stitches or an odd number of stitches, but you do wanna make sure that you change color on every single stitch within your steak. That's gonna really densely interweave your, your, uh, your, your colors together, your yarns together, so that they're even more hesitant to, to, un, to unravel. So, anytime you go to steak, you wanna make sure that you're working in bright light. You wanna have a sharp, a small, sharp pair of scissors that you can control really easily. This is not a, this is not a place to use your paper scissors that you really need to saw through the work at. Use some fabric shears or tailor snips or something else that is really easy and you know exactly, you're gonna cut exactly where you want to cut, where you want to cut and nowhere else. So for this unfinished steak, all we're gonna do is just cut straight up that center line and we're kind of separating the fabric slightly as we cut to make sure that we're really just cutting that center ladder in between the two legs of the V. I'm trying not to go too much into the sides of the V themselves. 
And the other thing when you're, when you're cutting a steak is to make sure that you kind of lift the portion that you're cutting away from the other side of the tube because you don't want to accidentally cut anything on the other side of the tube by accident. So we're just going to continue cutting all the way up. And we're going to lay it out flat. And you can see just how neatly that works. In any unfinished steak, you are going to have a couple of little bits and bobs that sort of you know, hang out there. But with a real non-super wash, kind of feltable wool, you really won't get much unraveling at all. And a three stitches on this side is plenty of buffer. The next kind of steak I want to show you is a crocheted steak, and that's exactly what it sounds like. It's a steak that's secured by a line of single crochet. Um, I've already done one side here, but I'll show you how it's done on the other. The first thing that you want to do is just kind of secure your yarn, your crochet yarn, over on the side. And I'm going to do that by going into just the side of my work, and you're working from right to left, so we're going to be working from the top down on this swatch. So I'm just going to secure my yarn, make a yarn over and pull it through, and then make another yarn over and pull it through. And that's a single crochet. So to secure my, my uh, to actually work my crochet on my, on my, across my steak here, I'm going to take my needle, I'm going to insert it into the left side of the first light blue swatch, and bring it up in the center of my, uh, my dark blue stitch. Pull a loop of yarn through, and then yarn over and pull a yarn, pull a yarn through. Again, down into the center of the light blue stitch, up through the center of the dark blue stitch, yarn over and pull it on through, yarn over and pull it on through. And I'm going to fold my work here to make it a little bit easier for me to just pick up exactly those two legs of those stitches and continue all the way to the bottom. So a crocheted steak is a great choice for when you're working with an animal fiber still that will felt, but that needs a little bit of help that for whatever reason, you know, either it's because it's very smooth or because it's very, very tightly spun, it's not going to felt as readily as those Shetland style, you know, Fair Isle yarns that we do, that we use with unfinished steaks. I'm using a hook that's comparable in diameter to the needle that I used. And I'm using a, a weight of yarn that's comparable in diameter to the, to the weight of yarn I used for my project, or a little bit thinner, because you don't want to add a whole lot of bulk in this line of single crochet. You don't want to add a whole lot of bulk to what will be a double thick area anyway. So I'm down to the bottom of my swatch. Now I need to just secure my yarn, because it's no good if that whole line of single crochet is unraveled because you didn't secure your yarn. So again, I just went down into the edge of my swatch here, pulled a loop of yarn up, Pulled another loop of yarn up, and then I'm just going to cut this and keep pulling and tighten to secure. So you can see that the two lines of single crochet are really just lie facing away from each other, opening up like a book, and you can see real clearly where exactly you need to cut. So I'm going to get a little closer to the table so I can do this in a more stable way. And taking my sharp scissors again, I'm going to just cut right in between those lines of single crochet. And you don't want to cut into those lines at all. You want to make sure that you stay far, far away from those. So here's the edge of that crochet secured steak. And you can see that even those very edge stitches aren't really going anywhere. They're kind of trapped up in the, in the crochet. Finally, we have the machine finished steak. And if you can see, I hope you can see, um, if you look really closely, there's a small zigzag stitch that runs up and down two columns in my steak. I've got, I did this on just a regular sewing machine, stretching the knitting slightly as I went so that the sewing machine stitches didn't pucker it up at all. Um, and I've worked that securing on just a little bit further away from my center cutting line than, than where I did with my crocheted steak. You can always work your securing anywhere you need to that you think will make the most sense. The closer the securing is to the cutting line, the more of the steak will remain intact through many washings and wearings. So I've cut it all the way up. And you can see that even if these unraveled all the way to the machine securing, nothing is going anywhere. So you can pick up your facings with confidence. So that's three different ways to tame your fear of steaks. We'll be right back. Mm -hmm.